Okay, we are recording. So without further ado, I present you with Domenico. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much to everyone. Let me, uh, give me a second, please. Okay, it's here. Okay, so thank you so much to everyone for, thank you so much to Dr. Regina and all the faculty members for letting me be part of these important seminars. Um, and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, thank you so much everyone for letting me be part of these important seminars and share with you part of my work with working with phytopathology. The title of this presentation is Understanding the Molecular Mechanisms Developed by pathogenic, Phytopathogenic Fungi for Plant Colonization and Infection. Uh, as you see, as you can see in the title, I will talk in about phytopathology, pathogenic fungi, the interaction with plants, but also uh, with yeah, this presentation, I, with, but, with this presentation, I want to to uh, share with you how my journey working of in plant pathology has been. So, in this talk, I will I will show you. Uh, information about three important plant pathogens. The first one is Ustilagomyces. Ustilagomyces is a fungus which induces infection in corn and teosintle. Teosintle is the putative ancestor of, of corn. And this fungus is maybe not so important in the agriculture, but this fungus is an important model plant pathogen. The second one is about Phytophthora infestans, which is Aomyces. This Aomyces or this Phytophthora infestans is a very important for agriculture. It induces infection in potato and tomato plants. And uh, it's uh, maybe Phytophthora infestans is the Phytophthora species with more information. And the last one is Fusarium oxysporum. Uh, which is induced infection. This fungus induces infection in different plants or different hosts. It's a very important for agriculture and Fusarium oxysporum species are worldwide distribute, distributed. So uh, I'm Mexican and I got my, my bachelor degree in biochemistry in the university of my state, which, my state, which is, which is uh, San Luis Potosí in Mexico. Uh, but after my, my bachelor degree, I moved to Guanajuato State uh, to Simba Staff. This institution is in this state, Guanajuato in Mexico. And when I was there taking my biochemistry classes, I met the professor Jose Ruiz Herrera. Uh, and also at that time I decided I want to do my, my master of science and my PhD thesis with him. He was working with two fungus. One of them is, was uh, Jarrobia lipolitica, which is a noscomycin. But and this, this fungus is important for, uh, for biotechnological applications. And the second one, it was Ustilagomitis, which uh, is a plant pathogen induced infection in corn and teosintle. But also, this fungus is close and related with the Mexican culture since pre-Hispanic times. This is with La Coche. This is the Mexican truffle or corn smooth. And maybe if I introduce, introduce with La Coche or Ustilagomides in this form, like uh, in these pictures, maybe you will think, you know, this is kind of ugly or is queer or I don't want to try. But what happens if I show you Ustilagomides uh, or with Lacoche like this? Maybe you will say, oh, I can try. So, but Ustilagomides is not only fungus for Mexican cuisine. Ustilagomides is an important model plant pathogen. This pathogen, it's a bio biotrophic plant pathogen. It means uh, the, uh, this fungus penetrate and colonize the plant tissue, but the fungus uh, keeps the plant tissue 
in or the plant, the whole plant holds in life during the whole infection process. And the plant doesn't show so much symptoms. So it is because the fungus needs the plants in life to complete the fungus life cycle at the end of the infection process. Ustilagomitis is also an important uh, plant, uh, an important fungus for a study that dimorphisms in eukaryotic organisms. Uh, it induces infections in corn and teosintle, and is a model, uh, a fungus model for mating, homologous recombination, signaling pathways, and pathogenesis. Talking about pathogenesis, in this presentation, we were talking about the epigenetic regulation of pathogenesis in Ustilagomitis. In eukaryotic organisms, the DNA is uh, organized and compacted in nucleosomes. Nucleosomes is a basic structure of the chromatin, but these nucleosomes can suffer modifications if some proteins, for example, histone acetyl transferases, induce the acetylation of the histones. With this acetylation of the histones, induce the relaxation of the nucleosomes, and the DNA is available to transcription factors for the expression of the genes located in this part of the DNA. But what happens is uh, if we induce the lesion of the GCM5 gene in Ustilagomitis. So the mutant, the mutant in Usti, the, uh, the GCM5 mutant in Ustilagomitis, or the mutant grows constitutively as mycelial form, as you can see here, compared to the wild type, but also the mutant is affected in virulence. The mutant induces only a small tumors, but the wild type induces big tumors in the plant tissue, as you can see here in these pictures. So the question is, what kind of genes are affected by the GCM5 deletion? So for answer these questions, we made the transcriptomic analysis of the mutant compared to the wild type. And we identify genes involved in or encoding for transcription factors, which they are important for pathogenesis. Uh, some genes encoding for plant, uh, for proteins in, involved in plant compounds degradations, genes encoding for secreted proteins, for example, effectors, genes or effector proteins. All these kind of genes are done regulated in the mutant. For example, uh, as you can see here, all these genes encoding for effectors. And these effector genes are located in clusters of pathogenesis in the Ustilagomitis genome. And all of them are done regulated in the mutant. You can see here too, some effector, effector genes, some transcription factors. For example, this is a, a master transcription factor, which is involved in the regulation of the whole infection process in Ustilago, or other effector genes, which they are very important for for plant colonization because they induce metabolic change in the plants during the colonization by the fungus. But all of these kind of genes with important roles in pathogenesis and virulence are done regulated in the mutant. So in summary of this part of the, of the presentation, if a GCM5, which is a histone acetyl transferase, induces the acetylation of the histones this acetylation induces the relaxation of the nucleosome and is possible the expression of genes involved in GS growth, but also it's possible the expression of genes involved in pathogenesis. However, if we made the deletion of GCM5, it's not possible the expression of genes involved in GS growth, but also it's not possible the expression of genes involved in pathogenesis. In conclusion, <clears throat> in Ustilagomitis, the genes involved in pathogenesis, for example, effector genes, some transcription factors, and some genes involved in plant compounds degradation, and also genes involved in dimorphism, all of them are under epigenetic regulation. After finish my, my PhD uh, in Simbastab, I was looking to continue working with uh, pathogenic fungi, but or pathogenic organisms. 
but I want to work uh, at that time. I, I really want to work with more aggressive uh, pathogenic pat plant pathogens. For example, Fusarium oxysporum or Phytophthora. So looking for that, I got a scholarship from UC Mexus, which is an um, which is an organization. Uh, this organization give uh, economic support for. Mexican students comes to USA to do a postdoc post postdoctoral uh, stays, but also it gives support to American students to go to Mexico to do a postdoc or part of the research projects. So with this scholarship, I start to work in UC Riverside with Professor Howard Judelson, who uh, he is working with Phytophthora infestans and which is a very important plant pathogen. And it, this pathogen induces infection in tomato and potato. But also, uh, I, have, I have interest, I, I'm interested in this pathogen because this, is, uh, this pathogen was originated in Mexico. Working with a uh, phytophthora in the research group of Professor Judelson, I had an, some some projects. One of them is the importance of promoter region of effector genes in Phytophthora during pathogenesis. And other was understand the metabolism of Phytophthora infestants during infection process. So Phytophthora infestants is an amoebiotrophic plant pathogen. So at the it means at the beginning of the infection process, this uh, pathogen shows a bio biotrophic behavior, but at the end of the infection process, the pathogen changed to necrotrophic behavior. Some of the most important structures during the biotrophic behavior or biotrophic stage of Phytophthora infestans is the apresoria and austoria. Apresoria is a specialized structure for uh, plant penetration. And Austorian is a specialized structure, a structure for getting nutrients during the infection and colonization. In Phytophthora, Phytophthora infesta, infestans has a, around 500 effector proteins. These effector proteins uh, has a different functions as you can see here in this table. Some of the most important effector proteins of Phytophthora um, are the RxLR secreted effector proteins or the crinkler effector proteins. Interestingly, the RxLR effector proteins are expressed in the, in the pathogen in Phytophthora infestans since a stage before the infection and also during the colonization and infection process, as you can see here. But the question is, how is the regulation of RxLR effector genes in Phytophthora infestans? To answer these questions, we analyze the promoter region of, of the RxLR effector genes in Phytophthora infestans. And we identify a motif, which this motif is present in these promoter regions. Interestingly, most of the RxLR effector genes have this motif and also genes with high expression in a stage before the plant penetration, during the penetration or during the plant colonization, most of that genes, most of that RxLR effector genes has this motif. To validate or to confirm these results by experimental, experimental work in the laboratory, we choose three of these effector genes uh, I showed you these three effector genes here in this table. They have a high expression uh, during the infection of tuber potatoes or leaves. Uh, some of them also show high expression in a, since a stage before of the infection process. And basically what we made is the promoter region of these three effector genes, we introduced that uh, promoter region in this plasmid or this vector, and, and we introduce that promoter in this uh, locus close to the TD tomato reporter gene. And with this construct, we made the transformation of Phytophthora infestans. 
For this presentation, I will show you results of the last gene, 07550. And as you can see here, when we use the native promoter, which this native promoter has the target motif, as you can see here, we observe expression of the TD tomato or reporter protein during cis germination, but also during tuber infection. No in Rai media. If we remember the table before here, when we in Rai media, the gene doesn't show expression. So when we use a mutated promoter, which is the same promoter, but we induce a mutation in the nucleotides of the target uh, motif, we didn't observe expression of the reported gene during the infection. However, when we, when, when we made transformation with this construct, and this construct has a, a minimal promoter, which is a shorter promoter, uh, including the target motif, again, we observe expression of the effect of the reported gene in seed germination and also during tuber infection. To confirm the results, we made a Western blood. And as you can see here, during the infection of potato leaves, using the full promoter with the target motif, we observe the, the expression of the reporter protein or the fluorescent protein. We observe the same when we use the minimal promoter with the target motif, but we don't observe that when we are using the, minim, the mutated promoter or when we are using the minimal promoter without the motif. This, this is during the infection of potato leaves, but also we observe similar results during the infection of tuber potatoes. Interestingly, this target motif is also present in other fusarionis, uh, sorry, in other Phytophthora species, as you can see here, for example, in Phytophthora soyae and Phytophthora capsicii. Another important question that we had in about Phytophthora infestant is how is the how is the metabolism uh, of Phytophthora during the plant colonization or plant penetration? So sucrose is the major carbon source for plant pathogens during the plant infection. And Phytophthora, similarly as other plant pathogens, they can metabolize sucrose and they induce hydrolysis of this sucrose in glucose and fructose. Phytophthora has two genes encoding for glycosyl hydrolases or invertase, invertase proteins. And in this gene, these proteins are involved in the hydrolysis of sucrose. Interestingly, in the apoplast of inoculated plants, the concentration of sucrose decreases compared to mock infected plants. It happens in tomato leaves, but also in potato leaves. As you can see here, the expression of this effect, these uh, glycosyl hydrolase genes or invertase genes. They, they show um, some expression during sporangia, sospor, or seed germination, which they are a stage before the infection, but also during the infection of potato leaves, uh, for example, at two days post infection, and also in early stage of the infection in tuber potatoes. As you can see here, during the penetration, the apresor, during the, the penetration of the plant tissue by the apressoria, the protein is located in the, in the tip of the apressoria, as you can see here in green. But also during the colonization, we observe the expression of the protein in the austoria, which is the structure for getting, getting nutrients during the colonization. To confirm these results, we introduce oh, uh, these invertase genes in Pichia pastoris. Pichia pastoris is a yeast, but in this yeast cannot grow in media using sucrose as carbon source. 
But after the transformation of PK pastures with the inverted genes of Itoptera infestans, the yeast has the capacity to grow in media using sucrose as only carbon source, as you can see here. Uh, the transformants, the PK transformants with the gene of Itoptera, they, that mutants or that transformants grows in these media conditions using sucrose as carbon source, but not the wild type. With these results, we can say uh, there is a motif present in the promoter of RxLR effector genes of Itoptera infestans, and that promoter, uh, that, that, that motif, it's involved in the regulation of RxLR effectors during the pathogenesis, and also the invertases in Phytophthora infestas localized to the Austoria and are programmed programma for infection specific expression. After finish my, my, post, my postdoc in Riverside, in UC Riverside, I really want to work with Fusarium oxysporum one of the most important uh, groups, research groups working with Fusarium oxysporum is the group of Professor Li Yunma. So uh, I established contact with her and thanks God she gave me the opportunity to work in, his, in her lab uh, with this interesting and amazing plant pathogen, which is Fusarium oxysporum. About my work in Fusarium oxysporum, I want to share with you uh, information about the differential plant colonization by endophytic and pathogenic Fusarium oxysporum strains. Fusarium oxysporum, it's a fungal, uh, Fusarium is a fungal genus with worldwide distribution and more than 300 phylogenetically distinctive species or species complex. One of the most representative species complex is Fusarium oxysporum. Which is which this Fusarium oxysporum induce infection in more than 100 uh, crops. Uh, Fusarium oxysporum it's a cross kingdom fungal pathogen uh, because some of the Fusarium oxysporum strains are plant pathogens, but also some of them are plant endophytes, and even some of them can induce infection process in animals or humans. One of the most important differences between uh, Fusarium oxysporum species is between pathogenic and endophytic Fusarium oxysporum. Pathogenic Fusarium oxysporum colonize external layers of the root, but also they, this pathogen has the capacity to colonize the xylem. In contrast, it has been described that endophytes only colonize external layers of the root. However, last year, it was described the capacity of endophytic strains of Fusarium oxysporum to colonize the vasculature, the root vasculature. With this new knowledge about the endophytic behavior of Fusarium oxysporum, we, this, this new knowledge about the endophytic behavior of Fusarium oxysporum opened to us a new questions, and, and some of them are here. For example, what are the differences between root colonization by endophytes and pathogens? And why only pathogens induce disease symptoms in the plant host? To answer these questions, we inoculate endophytic strains and pathogenic strains into, in, in, in two hosts. Two hosts. One of them is Arabidopsis and the other one is tomato. Endophytic strains has the capacity to colonize lateral roots, but not the primary root. In contrast, path pathogenic strains colonize lateral and primary root. When we observe these results, we got a, no a new question. And the question is, what is happening in the, in the junction of the primary and lateral root or why, is there, why endophytic strains cannot go forward to the primary root colonization? For answering these questions, we made, uh, in using different staining process, we identify 
high kilos and lining the position in the roots inoculated with endophytic strains, but no in roots inoculated with pathogenic strains. With these results, we can say the colonization by endophytes could be tissue specific, and we hypothesize that these uh, callus and lining the position at the primary root can be a physical barrier against the endophyte. Interestingly, when we analyze uh, the trans, uh, uh, using the meta, meta transcriptomic data in the pathosystem between Fusarium and in Arabidopsis plants, we observe in the plant, in the Arabidopsis plants inoculated with the endophyte strain, that plants uh, show high expressions of genes involved in callus deposition compared to plants inoculated with uh, pathogenic strains. We observe similar results for uh, lining, lining biosynthesis because some K regulators involved in the lining biosynthesis show higher, higher expression in uh, plants inoculated with the endophytic strain compared to the to the to the plants inoculated with pathogenic strains. Interestingly, genes involved in in plant defense, root plant defense, they are also with high expressions in plants inoculated with endophytic strain compared to plants inoculated inoculated with pathogenic strains. We consider that these differences in plant host colonization, for example, a structural plant material deposition, a callus and lining deposition, and also the, different, the dif differences in the transcriptomic response of the plant to the pathogen or the endophyte uh, are related, with the, related to the secretion of effectors by the endophytic or the pathogenic strains of Fusarium oxysporum. Uh, if we get focus on the effect of proteins in these in pathogenic or endophytic strains, it's important, uh, it's important to, to give a little information about the six effector genes or secreted in silent effector genes. These effectors are important for virulence in Fusarium oxysporum species. And interestingly, pathogenic strains, the, the, the strain uh, which induce infection in Arabidopsis, and also the strain which induce infection in tomato, that pathogenic strains has more genes involved in coding for six effector genes or other effector proteins important for, for virulence and pathogenicity compared to the, to the endophyte. Also, the pathogenic strains, 5176, which induce infections in Arabidopsis, and 4237, which is pathogen for tomato, these pathogenic species has more gene, have more genes involved in encoding for secreted proteins or secreted effector proteins involved in plant compound degradation compared to the, to the endoph endophytic strain. And as you can see here, the expression of that effector genes involving plant compost degradation uh, in the pathogenic strains, most of that effector genes show high expression since early stage of defection process. Uh, and, and the pathogen has a significant number, higher significant number of these effector proteins compared to endophytic strains. To validate and to uh, experimental validation of these uh, of these effector proteins, we choose three of them. The one of them is a glycosyl hydrolase. We choose a pectin hydro pectin lyse and one cutinase. All of them are involved in plant compounds degradation. And using uh, agro infiltration in tobacco leaves and using RP as attack, we observe the, the, uh, these effector proteins 
working in the apoplast of the infiltrated tissue. After six days post-infiltration, post we observe high callus deposition and high lining deposition in the, in the infiltrated tissue with the effect of proteins, but no in the negative control, as you can see here. So these proteins are doing the degradation of the plant, of the leaf tissue. The degradation of leaf tissue is a stress for the plant, for the plant tissue, and the plant responds with callus deposition and high lining deposition. In conclusion, the plant colonization by endophytic strains is a tissue specific. So 47, which is an endophytic strain, colonized lateral roots, but also it colonized the elongation and differentiation zone of the primary root, but the endophyte cannot colonize the primary root. In contrast, pathogenic strains of Fusarium oxysporum, can colonize, they can colonize lateral roots, primary root, and uh, in and also the elongation zone, the elongation and differentiation zone of the primary root. The endophytic strains of Fusarium oxysporum induce a, a structural plant material deposition. So callus deposition here in the junction of the primary and lateral root and lining deposition in the, in, also in the primary root. And moreover, 47, which is the endophyte, induce high expression of genes involved in plant defense. So finally, I want to just sh show you uh, two important problems. These problems are happening in my country, in Mexico, but also the, these problems are happening in California. Mexico, it's one of the main producers of avocado and but in Michoacan state produce more of the avocado from Mexico but now eh, we are having so much problems with Phytophthora cinnamomi and Phytophthora ebae eh, which they are inducing severe infection process in the avocado plants in Mexico and unfortunately also in California. And the second problem about phytopathology that is happening is uh, for blackberry plants uh, because Fusarium species are inducing a disease and se se severe problems in blackberry plants. It, it is also in Michoacan state in Mexico, but also in California. And this is a new Fusarium oxysporum species, which it was identified in 2017. So this is, a, this is now a problem and maybe these two problems in avocado and also in blackberries show that we still have so much to do in phytopathology. So finally, I want to say thank you so much to, uh, to Dr. and Professor Lee Yun Ma because she gave me the opportunity to work in her lab and also uh, working in her lab. Now I have the opportunity to share these interesting results for all of you. And also thank you so much to my lab partners, especially for my friends, for example, Holly, Shira, Kelly, Daniel and all the lab members, eh, Delay, so all the lab members in the of the Mala. Eh, thank you so much to everyone. Thank you. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you so much, Domingo. That was wonderful. Um, thank you so much, Regine. Yeah, no, I'm so glad you shared that with us. Um, it's really, it, it, it's interesting. If you want to um, stop sharing the screen so that we can okay. see folks, mm -hmm. um, no, it's really wonderful to see to see all of all all of this all of the work that you're doing. 
Um, I think a lot of us kind of just, even those of us that know, you know, that these things are going on, we kind of take for granted, you know, we buy our corn, we buy our avocados and it's all wonderful. But there's a lot that 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 um, farmers are dealing with and, and agriculture is dealing with. And so it's really, um, it, it, it's a really nice insight to see um, the biology of, of, of how some of these work and to see the work that you're doing with it. Yeah. Um, oh. No, no, no. So yeah, oh. so, so, so thank you for all of that. Yeah, I want to say something which is so sad about it and why I put, I show with you this information, especially the information about the avocado and the blackberries happening in Mexico. Uh, if you remember, I say that problem is in Michoacan state in another state close to Michoacan. Uh, unfortunately, that area, it's having so much problem with drug dealers. If people working like uh, farmers, they lost the job because they lost the plants, the avocado plants and the blackberry plants. My question is what they will do. So yeah. the only option for them will be work, go to working in bad things. So I, I feel and I think uh, people need to do something about it. So <laughs> to avoid that problems, because it's, it's, it's sad. So I was living in that area before come to California because I was giving some classes in a small institution there and, and the students and people is, they work a lot. They, they, they work, for example, the students go to work in the field before take classes in the evening or if they take classes in the morning after classes, they go to work in the avocado fields or blackberry fields or strawberry fields. So people work a lot. And I was thinking what happens if they cannot work more in this because they will lose all the avocado plants or the blackberry plants. What they, what that the students will do, what that younger people will do. So I think that is an important problem. The problem is also happening in California, but in California, the situation maybe is kind of different right. than in Mexico. No, that, that, that's, that's another, another really good insight that we always don't think, we often don't think about is the people that, that, that grow our food um, are, are, it's, it's very hard work and, and, um, and, um, and you're right, you know, often these people don't have a fallback if something happens to, to that livelihood. And if, mm -hmm. like you said, if you're in an area with drugs or, or you know, other things going on, um, yeah, sometimes people end up in bad situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, ready for a couple questions? Let's see. Um, what role is climate change in these agricultural issues? Um, fusarium wilt is something that is in this area made worse by monocropping and by increase in large moisture events. Yeah, so the, uh, for sure the the weather is the the weather is changing. So even here in Massachusetts, this year I saw less snow than the last year. So and maybe we are thinking that is good because we have a little more warm environment, but that is not really good because when heat is cold, need to be cold because that is normal in winter. So it, yeah, the, the climate changing is affecting also all the, not only uh, all, all the crops in the field. So in Fusarium as a pathogen has the capacity to adapt, to get adaptation for different environments. And it's a pathogen who can be success if, uh, if we change some conditions in temperature. So, but the plants doesn't, doesn't have that success as fusarium. So if uh, the, the, the claim, climate changes can maybe severe affect uh, the plants, but also uh, and improve maybe the the pathogenicity of some fungus as fusarium noxisporum or the vitalness of some fungus like that, like fusarium. Hmm. 
Um, another question is, can you speak to why um, Fusarium oxysporum can infect both plants and animals? Yes. Uh, for example, if we compare a Fusarium oxysporum, which induces infection process in plants, with other Fusarium oxysporum, which induce infection in humans, the the pathogen for humans, the Fusarium species pathogen for humans has genes which they can use for colonized plants. No, they don't have the like a, the whole repertory of genes for induce a strong plant colonization and infection, but still they have some genes for colonized plants. One of my lab partners, Delay, she is working with that kind of topics. And she observed like a, a pathogenic fusarium for humans colonize the cortex and the endodermis and cortex of the roots plants. So, and then when we analyze the genome of that, of that pathogens, we observe, oh, they have pectin lysis, some cutin lysis, some glycosylhydrolysis, and they have genes encoding for proteins involving plant compounds degradation or plant, plant colonization. So yeah, that is that happens with Fusari. Very interesting. Um, what are you excited to work on in the next stages of your career? That is a good question <laughs> because um, so I guess um, people doing posoglami or some PhD students. Uh, in the future, we are looking to get a position as professors or uh, in some university or institutions working with science. In my case, I feel so much excited. I feel so much exciting when I'm working with plant pathogenic fungi or interaction between pathogenic and plants. I really like that kind of topics. And hopefully, hopefully I say, and I cross my fingers, in the future, uh, I can have the opportunity to be a professor in, in Mexico. So I say before we in California, I was giving some classes on uh, biochemistry classes in some uni small universities in Mexico. And I really like that. So, but also I don't want to just give classes. I want to do a little science as much as possible. And I will try to, to get that. So. Hopefully, I can do that. Exciting. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> you you said um, you said when you got your bachelor's, you 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 started working with someone, and that's where you kind of got into this. Um, I'm just curious: were you interested in plants before this? Are you interested in plants, or yeah. or is yeah. it is it really more? I, obviously, it's more the, the the interaction and and you know sort of the the lab work. But how you know you know before before your bachelor's, were you interested in in any of this stuff in science and in and in and in, in in this topic at all? Yeah. Okay. So my parents and also when I was a child, we were living in. Actually, my parents are living there in a very small town. My town is between the mountains, between the, a lot of forests, a lot of trees, a lot of plants around. And my, father's, my father, is, he, when he was younger, because now he's a little old, uh, he was working in, as a farmer. He produ I remember he produced, uh, when I was a child, he produced the milpa. Do you know what is the milpa? What milpa means? So in the Mexican cultures, uh, some farmers uh, in the same field, they have uh, corn plants, but also they have bean plants and cucumber plants and different plants in the same area. Mm -hmm. So I remember that when I was younger and my father was working on that. Also, my father has a, a coffee farm. And, and, and so I was in interaction with plants since when I was a child. So because the plant was around me. And also I remember uh, Sometimes I observe some symptoms. At that time, I didn't know it was symptoms, but I remember I observed some symptoms in the leaves. So, for example, uh, coffee plants, or and I and I was thinking, what is that? But I never put so much attention when because I was so younger for that. So 
then when I have the opportunity to work in this kind of interaction between pathogens and plants, I realize uh, what is happening there. That's really interesting. That's wonderful. Um, now that we got a couple of questions from students. Let's see. Now that you are educated in plants and everything, do you see yourself working in some other field that is not related to this or you're, you, you're sticking with this? Yes, I, I want, I really like to work with fungus and in the future I saw my, I, I see myself working with fungus in the interaction with plants, but also I have, in, I have like a interest in working on, working on fungus in interaction with animals or humans. So, but it's still fungus, see, because I really like fungus. So. I, and, and also I will try to be a professor. I will do my best looking for that position in the future. But if not, maybe working in, I can open my, my options maybe in working in biotechnological company or something like that. But my third option is looking for uh, work, continuous working on science. Um, another student asks, are there any plants that can be grown with the avocados or blackberries that can help them with the infection? Uh, probably when we are talking about avocados or strawberry plants in the wild field but when we are working when we are talking about uh, blackberry plants for production like uh, for for big production of blackberries or big production of avocados maybe it's more difficult because we have a, like a big areas with only avocado or only blackberry, and maybe they don't have so much chance, the farmers don't have so much chance or so much space for different plants around. So I know volatiles produced by some plants helps others to improve the, the, the priming mm -hmm. effect in that plants, but I'm not sure if farmers working with avocado or blackberries, they can do like something like that. Maybe what we can try to do is try to use, for example, endophytes, uh, some endophytes, for example, from Fusarium oxysporum, because uh, in the literature, we can, we find information uh, about endophytic strains of Fusarium oxysporum can help and avoid a plant Fusarium oxysporum pathogens. So, because they have in they are in competition in the field, and for some reason, uh, endophytic uh, strains can be more success, and yeah, and they are in competition for nutrients or for or for uh, in the field, and it helps sometimes to improve the 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 symptoms in the plants. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting, and and um, and it really it really goes to show that 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 the way that we grow our food and growing food in such huge quantities, you are planting these sort of monocultures that lead to to a lot of a lot of these problems. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That is the the success of the milpa. So actually, I found some papers or people try to understand what is happening in the milpa because they have different crops in the same area and the volatiles of some of them helps others. And at the end, most of the plants are healthy and they have resistance to pathogens because they help between them to improve their mechanism defense. That's interesting. Um, yeah, just so the students knows, when he says volatiles, the plants give off um, compounds that go into the air and other plants perceive them and then it, it, it induces reactions in those other plants. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Um, we have, uh, somebody else asked, so what is the likelihood of fungal infections of blackberries will spread across to the U.S.? Can it infect other, and does it infect other berries or other than just blackberries? Mm, that is an interesting question because, uh, for example, I know some la, professors in Mexico, and they say the same Fusarium oxysporum species, which induce infection in blackberries, some of them are also inducing infection in strawberries. 
So I don't know if it is the same happen if the same is happening in California. Because normally uh, for Fusarium oxysporum species, they have they are a host specific. So for example, the Fusarium which induce infection in tomato doesn't induce infection in other plants. They can colonize maybe as endophytes, but they don't induce infection in other plants. So I, I'm, we need to, uh, for example, I, I, about what is happening in Mexico, I think people working with this problem in Mexico, they need to put attention and see if they don't have contamination with maybe different fusariums, or uh, it is true that fusarium can infect blackberries, but also strawberries. Someone earlier on had asked a question about um, the corn that we eat. Is any of it infected with the ustilago, and is that a and is that a problem for for people? Yeah. No. Ustilago is the one that that is the 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 truffle, right? The corn truffle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so. But people do grow the Ustilago just for the corn truffle. How does that work with infecting cornfields? I mean, are they near each other? You know, um, does the, does that question make sense? So let, let me see uh, if I understand. Uh, yeah, for example, if in nature, like uh, in nature, we can find, for example, if we have some corn plants, some of them can have symptoms of infection with ustilag. Some of them can show the tumors in the corn. Mm -hmm. So, but it's like a random. So it happens only in some plants because maybe two spores of the fungus was there and then get, they do a meeting and then uh, they penetrate the plant tissue and induce infection process. So, but because in Mexico, in, I don't know if in another countries from Latin America, but in Mexico, uh, with Lacoche, it's an important uh, food. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, some farmers induce the infection. And they, oh, they, produce... deliber they deliberately induce the infection. Yeah, exactly, because they want to collect a lot of uh, with Lacoche. And even you can find, you, in the supermarket, you can, you can find with Lacoche mm -hmm. because there is some farmers which they are producing, producing uh, with Lacoche, like uh, a lot of with Lacoche for for, for harvesting, for, yeah. Yeah and, yeah, and you can find it in the supermarket. Actually, with my professor, Jose Ruiz Herrera, the professor where, uh, the place where I did my PhD, he got some money from the government in Mexico for one project, and he was helping to people, to very poor people in Mexico to, to produce with La Coche. Mm. Because if you have the corn, like a, the maize, maize corn, mm -hmm. like uh, the, yeah, maybe the price of that is maybe $1. Mm -hmm. So, but if you, but if you, but the same corn with, with La Coche, so with the symptoms, it will, it will be maybe around $10. So oh, yeah. the price is so much higher. So it, if, yeah, this is a, an, a, I think that's is an important project. So for health people, which they are producing, uh, maize especially yeah. in poor towns or people where they really need to get some money right and if you guys haven't tried it it is delicious <laughs> yeah it I, is. I got i had a chance to try it it is good yeah and it's also in it also it's very easy to induce the infection so i did a lot of times before when i was there working with the stilago so, so it's cool. very easy Do we have any other questions? Well, that was amazing. And I thank you so much for coming. Um, and we're getting thank yous in the, in the, in the chat now. Um, so I'm, rec I'm recording this, I'm going to post it. And um, we're getting some good thank yous here from the students. So. Domingo, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope we get to see you another time and maybe in person at some point when you finally come and visit New York.
Yeah, yeah. I just want to say thank you so much to everyone. Thank you so much to the audience, to Regina, Professor uh, Bernie too. Thank you so much uh, for letting me be part of this talk. Hopefully everybody can understand me and, and understand a little bit more about phytopathology and what I did in, or what I'm, what I'm working in, the interaction between plant and pathogenic fungi. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. Thank you. It would be nice if he visited. I know. I'm trying to get him to come. I was like, come visit New York. I'll take you to Central Park. I'll take you to the Botanical Garden. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, Kelly is, I don't know, Kelly's off. Kelly is um, defending July 1st up in Amherst if you want to go up. I was going to oh, go up. Very cool. Yeah. And by then, um, Madison will be up there working. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can treat her to yeah. dinner. And oh, that would uh, be but, so nice. yeah, it's a Friday. It's a Friday. So we yeah. should think about it. I, Amherst is like the loveliest place in the world. I have not been there. Oh my gosh. It's my dream. It's weird. It's my dream. Wait, I'm going to stop recording. I'm, I'm still recording. I don't think so. Yeah, I am. Are you? Okay, now oh, I yeah.